The movie begins in the summer of 1992, with an ominous-looking pool in the backyard of a family's house. Their little daughter is asleep when she suddenly hears noise from the pool and wakes up. She approaches the window and peeking out, spots her brother's toy boat adrift in the backyard pool. She goes to her brother and tells the poor sick boy that she saw his boat outside. The boy is on a ventilator. After reassuring him, she sets her sights on retrieving the boat. She hears the babysitter talking to her mother and takes the chance to sneak out. Outside, she finds the boat, but as she reaches for it, an unseen force yanks her into the water. Panic sets in as she struggles beneath the surface. Suddenly, she notices her mother crouching by the pool's edge, extending her hand. Desperate for help, the girl swims towards her, but when she emerges from the water, the woman has vanished. Just then, the underwater lights start flickering. The little girl looks around in panic and rushes to get out of the pool, but then the boat pops up behind her again. Determined to fetch the toy, she tries again, swimming towards it. As she finally grabs a hold of the toy, she forcefully gets pulled underwater once more. Despite her attempts to scream for aid, she's trapped beneath the surface. Moments later, the struggle ceases, and her lone shoe pops up onto the surface of the water, with the little girl nowhere to be found. In the present day, the Waller family finds themselves in a transitional period after Ray, the father, is forced to relinquish his baseball career due to an illness. This setback leads them to seek temporary refuge in a house while they navigate their next steps. Before this, they used to move around with Ray as he changed locations often for his matches. But now that he no longer plays, they finally need to settle down. With Ray's health in mind, the family embarks on the journey of house hunting to find a more peaceful and permanent residence. Their search takes them through various neighborhoods, with each house they visit, offering glimpses of possibilities. However, none seem to meet their criteria until they stumble upon a property that catches Ray's eye. A charming house with a backyard pool a feature he's always dreamed of. Excitement fills the air as they explore the house, with Ray's enthusiasm evident as he takes in the sight of the pool. He, along with his wife, Eve, share some childhood stories about swimming. Their talk is interrupted when their children, Angel and Elliot, call out to them, saying that they are ready for lunch. Eve heads off, while Ray stays back. As he inspects the swimming pool, his attention is drawn to a baseball lying nearby, triggering nostalgic memories of his glorious sports endeavors. Eager to retrieve the ball, Ray reaches out but loses his footing, plunging into the pool. Panic ensues as he struggles beneath the surface, his mind racing with recollections of his baseball glory days. After struggling for a bit, he finally grabs the railing of the pool and hauls himself out. Thankfully, his son Elliot sees him and is quick to react, alerting Eve and Angel to the dire situation. Together, they rush towards him and help the panicked Ray out. Eve calms him down. Later. His wife takes him to the hospital for medical attention. After a thorough examination, the doctor recommends low-impact activities such as yoga or swimming to aid in Ray's recovery and prevent future seizures. Upon leaving the hospital, Ray expresses his desire to make the house with the pool their permanent home. He sees it not only as a place to settle down, but also as a potential source of therapeutic relief through swim therapy. Eve shares in his sentiment. She is relieved at the prospect of finally establishing some roots after years of upheaval caused by Ray's baseball career. Without wasting any more time, the Waller family finally settles down into their new home. They begin renovating the place a bit. Soon, Elliot and Angel also transfer to their new school, while Eve begins her new job. This time, there's a sense of relief, knowing they won't be constantly torn between work, school and home. Later that day, they all rallied to clean up the pool. During the cleanup, Angel excitedly reveals that she's been recruited for the swim team, a decision that fills Ray with pride. As he tends to the pool's maintenance, a sudden mishap occurs when something sharp in the drain cuts his hand, causing him to yelp in pain. He takes out his hand and sees a deep cut that is oozing blood. Concerned, his children rush to his side, only to witness a strange black liquid trickling out of the drain. They promptly summon a maintenance team to inspect the pool. After a lengthy inspection, the men reveal the pool's unique nature to the oblivious family. It is a spring pool, drawing water from an underground source in the area. Due to this, the pool has natural self-sustaining features like filtration and geothermal heating, making it a great asset. Hearing this, the family is overjoyed thinking that they hit the jackpot. Little do they know what they've gotten themselves into. After the cleanup, the family members spend their time in the pool, enjoying the beautiful day. Later that evening, Ray unpacks their belongings, while Eve takes a moment to fill out paperwork. With the chores done, she decides to indulge in a nighttime swim. 
However, her peaceful swim is interrupted when she notices her pet cat behaving strangely. Brushing it off, she assumes it is simply adjusting to the new environment, but her tranquility is shattered when she spots a strange figure by the poolside. Initially dismissing it as Ray playing a prank, she laughs it off until she realizes no one is there. A chill runs down her spine as the pool lights flicker ominously, prompting her to hurriedly exit the water and retreat indoors, shaken by the eerie encounter. After checking on her children, Eve returns to her room to find her husband lying down. Upon sensing her presence, Ray stirs awake. Eve questions him about whether he had ventured outside while she was swimming. Ray denies any such excursion. She peers out at the pool through their window and wonders what might have happened. Then she decides to put up a pool cover and check out the lights just to be sure. Meanwhile, the family cat lounges on the diving board, seemingly entranced by the same toy boat that had disappeared at the beginning of the movie. As the boat emerges from the water, the pool lights flicker once more, casting an eerie glow over the scene. The cat peers into the swimming pool, and a strange sound echoes from within the water, before it all turns black. The following day, the family finds a strange surprise waiting for them at the pool. Their pet cat is missing, while its collar is floating in the middle of the pool. Concerned, Elliot calls them over. Eve assumes the cat fell into the water, and the collar came loose, but the boy is worried. They decide to look around for the cat, while the others search for the missing feline, Ray reaches down to retrieve the collar. As he grabs for it, his bandaged hand dips into the water and becomes all wet. The man comes inside to change the bandage, but to his astonishment, he finds the wound mysteriously healed. There is not even a little scar left behind. This leaves him extremely baffled. The healing properties of this spring pool seem almost magical and otherworldly to him. Despite all their tries, the family can't seem to spot the cat. They set up the covers for the pool to avoid any more of such incidents. That night, Eve is plagued by a nightmare in which the pool is covered while she's submerged underwater. Startled awake, she finds Ray swimming in the pool, unaware of the unsettling events unfolding around them. The following day, Ray attends his therapy session, and the doctor is astounded by his remarkable progress in such a short period. It becomes evident that Ray's rapid improvement could be attributed to the water therapy, indicating that the pool is indeed aiding his healing process. Encouraged by this realization, Ray becomes more dedicated to his water therapy, embracing it wholeheartedly. The next day, after Elliot is back from school, he asks his mother if he can go for a swim since he finished all his homework. Eve agrees, but only if he takes his father along. Elliot extends an invitation to his father to join him for a swim. Ray is busy with his therapy, but he decides to join his son as soon as he is finished. He draws a smiley face on a coin and asks Elliot to toss it into the pool for him. He will come to find it as soon as he is done. Happy with the outcome, Elliot takes the coin and cheerfully goes to swim at the shallow end of the pool, waiting for his father to finish his tasks. While underwater, Elliot notices a coin being tossed into the pool. He assumes it is his father's doing. However, upon resurfacing, he's surprised to find no sign of Ray. Perplexed, Elliot dons his goggles and begins searching underwater for the coin, only to have more coins thrown into the pool, with one landing near the drain. One by one, he swims towards the coins and begins collecting them. All of a sudden, Elliot hears a strange voice calling out to him. He looks up to find a girl observing him. Curious, Elliot swims towards her, but she vanishes before he can resurface. Growing increasingly uneasy, Elliot tries to convince himself that it's just Angel playing a prank to scare him. He calls out to his sister multiple times, but she is nowhere to be found. This eerie encounter leaves him feeling extremely unsettled. Undeterred by the strange occurrences, Elliot continues to swim stopping beneath the diving platform when he suddenly hears a thud. Peering up, he catches the platform move with the weight of a person standing on it. But soon enough, it stops. He slowly swims out from under and jumps up, only to find the surface deserted. Then, he hears a young girl's voice emanating from the skimmer nearby, asking for help. She says that she is looking for her mother. Elliot approaches the skimmer, and the girl introduces herself as Rebecca Summers. She says that she found her toy. Elliot retrieves it from inside the skimmer. The toy is entangled in strange hairs. As he is removing them, a sudden terrifying hand grips his arm, sending shivers down hind. He screams in terror and quickly moves back. He notices a dark silhouette within the skimmer. Quickly getting out of the pool, he rushes to inform his mother of the incident. Alarmed, Eve runs out to investigate, but finds nothing amiss. There on the pool surface floats his toy. Later when she shares the incident with Ray, he suggests maybe someone snuck in, but Eve doesn't agree. She confirms that she went outside to look, there was no one there. Ray then suggests that perhaps Elliot might be pretending, 
due to difficulties making new friends. Calling his own son delusional, instead of trusting his words, is quite harsh. Worried for their introvert son, Eve proposes having the baseball team over so they can break the ice and get together. Ray is ecstatic at the idea and decides that they will have a pool party. The couple vows to take extra care of Elliot. Together they walk into school, and Ray even lends a hand in guiding the students during baseball practice, upon Elliot's coach's request. During practice, Ray's enthusiasm is quite visible. He eyes the bat almost hungrily, despite his illness. Seeing this, the team coach urges him to hit the ball just once, and Ray agrees. He misses the first two balls, and falls down on the third one, making the people anxious. Still, he gets up and wants the coach to throw the ball one last time. With a powerful swing, he sends the ball soaring far into the distance. However, instead of joy, confusion blankets the faces of his family, who are watching this from the sidelines. As night descends, Ray and Eve decide to leave their children at home to go on a date. Before they depart, Angel cautions Elliot against playing pranks on her. She tells him that one of her friends would come over, but he better keep this between them. In the absence of their parents, Angel invites over her schoolmate and swimming buddy Ronan. They go and frolic around the pool, having fun. They decide to play a game, in which one of them would close their eyes and look for the other inside the pool. Ronan goes first, and soon it is Angel's turn. As she closes her eyes and begins searching for the boy, he slides past her and gets out of the pool. She keeps calling, but there is no answer. As she waves her hands around, she isn't able to touch Ronan, but strangely, she feels a presence around her. She snaps open her eyes and sees someone beneath the surface of the pool. Dipping her head in, she looks around, but is unable to find anyone. Suddenly, someone calls out from behind her. The startled girl quickly whips around, but finds nobody there. Thinking that Ronan is playing a prank on her, she dives in to look for him. Her experience suddenly takes a terrifying turn, when something sinister pulls her downward. She struggles and thrashes against the force, submerged far deeper than she anticipated. Looking up, the surface of the pool is barely visible. Panicked, Angel finally frees herself and swiftly swims up, emerging from the water. The poor girl is terrified out of her wits, and her mind is racing with confusion. Crawling out of the pool, she finally sees Ronan, who is shocked to see her panicked state. She recounts her unsettling experience to him, and he reassures her that he hadn't pulled her down. Comforting her, Ronan suggests that her leg might have become entailed with the pipe. After he assures her that there is nothing ominous lurking beneath the surface, the girl finally calms down. Right then, Elliot calls out, telling her that their parents are back. The panicked teenagers quickly empty the poolside to avoid being caught. The next day, Elliot approaches Angel and inquires if she witnessed anything unusual in the pool. He says that he knows she saw something in the pool last night. When she refuses to answer, he threatens her to tell their mom how she sneaked out with Ronan. The girl resorts to telling him that her leg just got caught in a pipe. Elliot refuses to believe this and claims that she is lying, but Angel, wary of stirring up trouble, vehemently denies noticing anything out of the ordinary. Elliot believes that the pool serves both as a healing and a haunted place. However, he also knows that these stories would not be believed. Just then, Eve comes in, bringing the party stuff. Soon, the pool party begins and all the neighborhood guests start to arrive. They bring gifts along with them. The pool area is filled with all the neighborhood people and their kids, enjoying the food and swimming. During the party, the genius Elliot takes proactive measures by setting up a camcorder to record all activities in the pool. His recent unsettling experience and his father's unusual improvement in health has left him feeling uneasy, prompting him to take precautions. In the meantime, Eve notices all the people swimming around the pool and gets a little uneasy. Back at the poolside, Ray is approached by the coach's son, who brought the ball that Ray had hit the other day. Ray notices how it looks completely battered, and happily signs it for him. He then asks him to team up for a match against the man in the pool. They get in the water, with the boy mounted on Ray's shoulders and happily compete with the other team. Back inside the kitchen, Eve is concerned about the pool's mysterious nature. She decides to seek answers from the real estate agent. The agent stutters at first, but then finally gives in, and shares the chilling tale she recently heard regarding the backyard pool. The previous occupants of the house refrained from using the pool due to a tragic incident where a young girl had previously drowned in it years ago. Eve's heart races as she inquires if the girl's name was Rebecca, which the agent confirms. A sense of foreboding grips Eve as the pieces of the puzzle start to fall into place, hinting at a connection between their unsettling experiences and the tragic history of the pool. Meanwhile, back in the pool, Ray is enjoying the moment, with the kid perched on his shoulders. However, 
Their joy is short-lived when a sinister black liquid oozes from the drain, finding its way into Ray's mouth. Instantly, Ray's demeanor shifts as he becomes overtaken by an unseen force and attempts to drain his shoulders. Witnessing the distressing scene from above, Elliot springs into action and rushes to urgently inform his mother. The coach also sees his son drowning and quickly dives in to save him. The party soon ends and despite the ugly circumstances, thankfully the child's parents opt to not press charges. The mother is furious. Eve tries to apologize, telling her that Ray is sick and the incident occurred because of his ongoing struggle with his condition. But the woman sternly declines her apology. She tells Eve off, saying that they should just stay away from her family. After they go away, Eve approaches Ray and tells him that they won't stay in this house anymore because it is not safe. The pool is not safe. The family loads up in their car and is ready to leave the property. Suddenly, Ray begins experiencing difficulty breathing, accompanied by the expulsion of the same black liquid. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, they quickly descend the car and take Ray back inside, allowing him some much-needed rest. Their plan to escape the house is now totally cancelled. Exhausted and emotionally drained, the entire family grapples with the repercussions of the ordeal. Eve calls the doctor, who asks her to come in soon for another appointment. After the call, she goes back to her bedroom, where Ray strangely insists on going back to the pool. The man seems eerily obsessed with it. Angry, the woman goes to her children's room. The next day, driven by a relentless quest for answers, Eve delves into her own investigation of the pool's history. Her research uncovers a chilling pattern of disappearances linked to the house. Determined to unravel the truth, Eve tracks down Mrs. Summers, Rebecca's mother, to seek clarity about her daughter's untimely demise. Initially, the woman refuses to yield any information, going as far as even denying that she even had a daughter. But soon, after hearing the sincerity in Eve's voice, Mrs. Summers gets up and goes to stand beside the window. As she begins the harrowing tale, her eyes start oozing a strange black liquid. She says that the pool, once a source of healing spring water, exacted a sinister toll. To sustain its healing properties, a grim sacrifice was demanded. For each life saved, another must be offered. Shocked by the revelation, Eve listens in horror as Mrs. Summers recounts the sacrifice of her to save her terminally ill son. The water used her as a vessel to extract its sacrifice. Eve is horrified and tells her that her daughter is still looking for her. In a sudden twist, Mrs. Summers begins coughing violently, expelling the same ominous black liquid. Eve watches in disbelief as it drains from Mrs. Summers' body into a small fountain nearby, leaving her shaken to the core. The old woman continues, saying that the water will exact its sacrifice and sleep again, until someone else in need of help finds it. Eve rushes out of the crazy woman's house. Meanwhile, back home, Ray is taking a bath when he suddenly begins to gag and strange black veins start to appear on his skin. His eyes widen in terror before the episode abruptly stops. Outside, the pool also oozes black liquid. That night, after the two siblings are back home, Elliot hears the plaintive purrs of a cat and rushes to investigate. He finds the pool mysteriously refilled with water. He hears the cat's purrs coming from an inflated flamingo. As he goes near the floaty, he loses his balance and tumbles into the pool, triggering the pool cover to ominously begin closing on its own. Angel sees this from the kitchen and dashes to intervene, but her efforts prove futile against the relentless force of the closing cover. Just as panic threatens to consume her, Eve arrives on the scene, joining forces with Angel to stop the impending danger. They stop the closing cover, and she tells Angel to run for help. As Angel races to seek assistance, Eve plunges into the water in search of Elliot, her heart pounding with dread. Despite her efforts, she is unable to find him. She comes up and uses a pipe to tie herself before taking the torch and diving in to search once more. Angel, on the other hand, sustains an injury when she slips in a puddle of water and accidentally brushes against broken glass on the floor. Startled, she hears a strange noise and frantically searches for her father, only to discover him overtaken by the spirit. However, he disappears suddenly, terrifying the poor girl even more. Crying, she picks up her phone to call for help. As she begins to call 911, the possessed Ray appears and snatches the phone away from her. Meanwhile, outside in the pool, Eve is navigating through the eerie darkness. Angel, on the other hand, fights against her possessed father's advances with determination and courage. Before he can stop her, she rushes out, shouting for help. In the pool, Eve finally finds Elliot. However, before she can escape, she encounters the lingering spirits of the people next to the healing spring. Their spectral forms tug at her with relentless force. At the other end, Angel evades her possessed father, seeking refuge inside the garage. But he soon finds her, 
making her rush out again. Simultaneously, Eve fights against the spirit's grasp, determined to free herself from their sinister hold. In a moment of desperation, Rebecca materializes before her, clutching Elliot's smiling coin. Seeing the coin float up, Eve realizes that she has been swimming downwards instead of upwards. Seeing the light, Eve propels herself towards it and finally emerges from the depths of the water, with Elliot in her arms. She is terrified to see the motionless form of Elliot. Desperate to resuscitate her beloved son, she quickly begins administering chest compressions. Just then, Ray arrives, telling Eve that it is too late. The woman begs him that they need to help Elliot, but the possessed man attacks his wife. Before he can choke poor Eve to oblivion, Angel emerges from hiding and strikes him with a bat, causing him to collapse. Eve and Angel's comforting words help Ray regain consciousness, while Elliot also awakens. Realizing the urgency of the situation, the family prepares to leave the house as quickly as possible. However, Ray notices the black liquid spreading through the pool, signaling the presence of the spirits of the healing spring. Elliot also starts getting worse. Understanding that a sacrifice is necessary to appease them, Ray makes a courageous decision. He swims towards the black liquid, sacrificing to protect his loved ones. Despite the heart-wrenching tragedy, the family resolves to remain in the house to prevent others from falling victim to the malevolent forces of the spring. The movie ends with Eve, Angel, and Elliot deciding to fill the pool, severing the connection to the haunted spring and ensuring their safety from its eerie influence for good.